Yahushua died for me. The sacrifice beyond my understanding. Forgiveness beyond comprehension. Oh, how can I repay Yahushua? Yahuwah, to you we offer. Yahushua, to you the gifts we bring. Holy Spirit, accept this offering which we offer unto thee. I believe. All that the scripture say about the love beyond my understanding, forgiveness beyond comprehension. Oh, how can I repay Yahushua? Yahuwa, to you we offer. Yahushua, to you the gifts we bring. Holy Ghost, accept the suffering which we offer unto thee. Hi, brethren. You know, since the names were changed, hardly has anybody praised our Creator. Hardly has anybody praised the Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, who laid down his life for us. We ought to praise him. Praising Jesus, who never died for you, is preposterous. Think about it. It's like you laying down your life for your husband, for your wife, and then they go to thank a different person altogether for saving them. It doesn't make any sense. Respect should be given to whom it is due. And Yahushua HaMashiach has earned it. He laid down his life on the cross for your salvation. Why does that not matter to you? The change of name is the change of person. Even if the change of name wasn't the change of person, does it not sound wrong to you that somebody would lay down his life for you? You are the bride of Yahushua and you cannot be bothered to worship and praise his name. You wouldn't address your wife by another woman's name. You wouldn't address your husband by another man's name. So if you are the bride of the Messiah, Yahushua, why do you have a problem addressing him by his name? Why do you have a problem acknowledging his name? Why do you have a problem respecting and worshipping and adoring the person who gave everything for you, paid for your sins, even when he was without sin? Okay, so the reasons so many people have a problem accepting their creator Yahuwah and the Messiah Yahushua is because Satan has blinded their eyes. It's because they are not part of the chosen ones. It's because their names are not written in the book of life. It's because the Messiah foretold us in advance that not everybody will be chosen, that not everybody will be able to believe because the veil of Satan is over their eyes and no matter how hard they try, they just cannot comprehend it. Okay, so even the Messiah Yahushua told us clearly that we cannot come to know Almighty Yahushua HaMashiach himself except his father Yahuwah allows us to. That is why the scriptures prophesied about the chosen and the people whose names are not written in the book of life. So we're going to begin with a brief prayer. Eternal Father Yahuwah, I worship you, I praise you, I bless you, I thank you, I magnify you, I appreciate you, I thank you. Forgive our sins, great Yahuwah, for the many ways and times we've wronged you. We do not deserve you. Pardon us, blot out our offenses, have mercy upon us and purge us of all iniquities. Wash us in the holy blood of your son Yahushua Hamashiach. I sanctify this exercise in the holy blood of Yahushua HaMashiach and I decree and declare that no weapon of the devil formed against us shall ever prosper. Any tongue that rises against us in judgment must be condemned. It is well with our souls. No weapon of the devil formed against us shall prosper. I submerge my words, my utterances. I sanctify them with the holy blood of Yahushua HaMashiach that my words may be to your glory and for the salvation of souls. I ask this Yahuwah in the mighty name of your son Yahushua HaMashiach. Thank you.
sorry friends i forgot you know i'm trying to get used to it the word bless this you know i've read that the etymology of the word bless is ancient origin shows is of satanic pagan origin so we are not allowed to say bless and also you must know like i always make a brief introduction the name the title god is not the title or the name of our creator okay because mankind has been told small letter g is for satan capital letter g is for the creator that is a huge preposterous fallacy because there is no way the almighty creator will share a name with satan you already told us in isaiah 42 8 i will never share my glory with anybody how can he share his identity his name with satan because the name is the only means and medium by which any spirit can receive worship but satan has superimposed the name god as the name of the creator to deceive mankind in fulfillment of revelations 13 8 that all inhabitants of the world will worship satan will worship the beast okay if you check um, ancient Britannica 11th edition 1911, it tells you clearly that the word God is a common Teutonic word for all personal objects of worship for the superhuman beings of the heathen mythologies. Heathen means pagan, satanic. So upon the introduction of Christianity, the word God was, you know, adopted as the name representing the most high. And that is wrong because this is all Satan. Likewise, Jesus Christ, if humans believe, is just a harmless replacement of the actual name of the Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. But it's not because the Messiah, Yahushua, foretold us in Matthew 24, 3 to 5, that when Satan, that when his name is changed, when his identity is claimed, we should know it is only by Satan. It's, it's not an accidental occurrence. It's not just a harmless human replacement. We shouldn't just overlook it. We should pay attention. He said in Matthew 24 verses 3 to 5, the asking tell us how will the end times manifest? How will everything happen? What did he say? See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. Out of all the religions, Jesus is the only one who claims to be the Lamb of the Creator, whereas he has never been born, whereas he is not the Lamb. So he is the false Lamb, posing as the Lamb of the Creator. He is that fake Lamb prophesied about in Revelation 13, 11. I saw a, a beast rising out of the earth with two horns, posing as a lamb, but in truth, he is of the dragon. Jesus is the son of Satan. Go on YouTube, see everything going on. You're going to see Pope Francis revealing all the truth, not because he's righteous, but because he is the first beast in Revelation 13. He tells you there are two beasts, one out of the sea, the world, the second out of the earth from hell, Jesus. But Francis is that first base and he tells you clearly that God is Satan. Human beings do not understand and that he tells you clearly Jesus is the son of Satan because the name of your creator is Yahuwah. Y-A-H-U-A-H. -H. His son is Yahushua, meaning Yahuwah saves, my father saves. Okay, that is why he told us in John 5, 43, I have come in my father's name, Yahuwah, and you have not received me. But when someone else comes in his own name, Jesus, Mohammed, Guru, Allah, Buddha, Sikh, whatever it is, you will receive him. Okay? So, you must learn to drop the old ways. This is all in fulfillment of the prophecies. In Daniel, 20, in Daniel 12, he tells you clearly, verse 4, that people are going to diligently search in the end times and knowledge is going to increase. And that all inhabitants of the earth will worship Satan, will worship God. All inhabitants of the earth will worship Jesus, except those whose names are not written in the book of life. Now, why are some people unable to comprehend this, to grasp this, to get over it? Because if really you care about the salvation of your soul if really you care about your creator your loyalty your solidarity your allegiance should lie to the person behind the name not to the name that you have been introduced to acts 15 29 tells you clearly we ought to obey yahuwah our creator rather than man we are not bound by human traditions we are not bound by human impositions we are bound to our creator because revelations tells you that the whole life you are living everything that has happened that is happening today 
every part of mankind has already transpired in a different dimension. That is why um, the book of Daniel and Revelation is all written in past times. Okay, so everything has happened and those who were chosen, their names have been written in the book of life such that when they hear the name of the creator, when they hear the name of the Messiah, it brings their hearts to home. It brings their hearts to the creator. They remember because as soon as you're born, you lose your memory, your spiritual identity, you lose your spiritual recollections of who you were before you were you know, brought forth into this earth. But Revelation 13, it tells you that the chosen ones will remember, but those whose eyes have been blinded, they will be incapable of accepting their creator, of accepting the Messiah, Yahushua. Isaiah 52 verse 6, it tells you that in the end, in the last days, that the people of the creator will come to know that he is the one speaking to us because all these years we have been believing it is God speaking to us. God is Satan, but we do not realize that it is Yahuwah our creator. It's all in fulfillment of the prophecy. Isaiah 52 6, Revelation 13 8. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your sons will have visions. Acts chapter 2 verse 17 tells you all that. And that is why Pope Francis says, do not have any personal relationship with the Messiah because he knows that in these last days, the Holy Spirit is going to be teaching and revealing himself in spirit and in truth. Okay? But those whose eyes have been blinded cannot accept that truth. Yahushua tells you clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? Now, we're going to um, proceed. No, many people keep thinking, does the change of name really matter? It doesn't matter. It does matter. You must obey strictly, stringently, every dictate, every command of the Creator. He told us in Deuteronomy 12, 32, see that you obey all that I command you. Do not take away from it. Do not add to it. Do not add. Do not take away. So if he told us not to tamper with his laws, how much more his name when his second commandment says do not use my name in vain and now human beings have completely annihilated his name from the usage and surface of the earth okay but people's eyes have been blinded but by the power of the holy spirit because he is the helper who has been given to us to abide with us forever he said i will not leave you orphans i will send you a helper who will abide with you till the end of age and that is the holy spirit who is teaching us acts 2 17 says in the last days i will pour out my spirit on all flesh okay so by the power of the holy spirit the chosen ones when they hear the name of their messiah the name of the creator they have a recollection they have a spirit to accept him because their names are written in the book of life but satan has blinded the eyes of so many that is why the messiah yahushua said in john chapter 6 verses 43 to 45 then yahuwa then yahushua answered and said to them do not grumble with one another so when you, you try to convince people and they don't see reasons do not grumble with one another do not be offended because it's like you put a flash in a touch light in the eyes of a blind person he would never see you would never see and then you get offended or oh, can't you see how much light i'm putting into your eyes why can't you see they have they have no vision that is the way it is satan has blinded the eyes of the unbeliever second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 tells you that john 6 43 to 45 says then yahushua answered and said to them do not grumble with one another no one is able to come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and i shall raise him up in the last day no one is able to come to me except yahuwah draws him and i will raise him up on the last day okay so it's only the ones that are chosen by yahuwah the creator it doesn't mean that he's being partial to pick some people to be selective no he, like i said the life has already happened in a different dimension so these people have already conquered they have already persevered they have already proven themselves to be worthy of the kingdom of yahuwah so their names have already been written in the book of life but the second life that you're living today is a second chance it's another opportunity technically the people whose names are not written should be in hell this is another chance for those whose names are not written to decide to make a choice because the creator has given human beings free will out of all the creatures in the world he gave only human beings free will when the messiah yahushua came to give his life for the salvation of mankind he didn't just go and die on the cross no he preached he taught to give you the free will to make a choice so that if your names were not written before you can write your name that is why he picked judas to be his betrayer not because 
he was victimizing Judas, but it had already occurred in a different dimension. Judas had already proved to be the traitor. He had a second chance to prove to be a better person, but he still couldn't. And he is giving us that same chance, whose names are not written in the book of life. As said in, Re in Revelations 13, 8, you have that chance to write your name. And if for any reason your name was written in the book of life, you still have the decision to change it or to remain in the book of life because your free will determines where you spend your eternity. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Joshua twenty two fifteen. Okay, so John six forty three to forty five. Then Yahushua answered and said to them, Do not grumble with one with one another. Don't quarrel with people when they refuse to believe. No one is able. Not no one is willing. No one is able. No matter how hard they try, they cannot. No one is able to come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I shall raise him up on the last day. It has been written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by Yahuwah. Can you see? It's all in fulfillment of the prophecies. It has been written in the prophets, that, and they shall be taught by Yahuwah. Everyone then who has heard from the Father Yahuwah and learned comes to me. And for the purpose of this exercise, you must know I'm using the ISR version of the scriptures. Threw away the regular Jesus Bibles because that is imp superimposing the names of Satan and the son of Satan, Jesus, over the names of your creator and the Messiah, Yahushua, who died for you. So use the international standard, um, um, what's, um, international scriptural version, ISR. So you're going to see the true context of the true scriptures. So nothing is corrupt. You're going to get it raw and true. Okay. It has been written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by Yahuwah. Everyone then who has heard from the Father Yahuwah and learned from him comes to me, comes to Yahushua. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. This is Apostle Paul also confirming what Messiah Yahushua foretold. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of Yahuwah, for they are folly, foolishness, madness, and sanity to him. And he's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. That is why when people, it takes a whole lot, it takes the Holy Spirit for you to be able to, uh, to reject God, whom you believed is your creator, to reject Jesus, whom you believed is your Messiah, and come to act, not just reject them, but you must accept them for who they are. If you are a Christian and you're saying, oh, you're going to accept Jesus as your Lord, and you're going to accept G Messiah Yahushua as your, as your Savior, you are wasting your time because you're guilty of idolatry. You cannot superimpose or equal Satan and the son of Satan with the creator and the son of the creator Messiah Yahushua. Choose you this day whom you will serve. I will not share my glory with anybody and I will not share my praises with another. Isaiah 42 8, Joshua 22 15. So you cannot sit on the fence because your indecision is a decision. All right. So you cannot say you're going to put one leg here and one leg there just to be on the safe side. It is all or nothing. Okay, the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of Yahuwah, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually descend. Okay, that is why also uh, Messiah Yahushua in John chapter 6 verse 63, he said, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. He's telling us clearly it is the spirit, that helper, who gives life. That the flesh, your human flesh, is no help at all. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. The word of the creator is his son, Yahushua. His words are not mere letters. They are not mere alphabets. His words are a person. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Okay, so he is the word of Yahuwah giving to us. That is why he says the word was made flesh. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahuwah the creator. The word was the word was Yahuwah the creator. The word was with Yahuwah and the word, you know, was, was Yahuwah. So the word was made flesh. He was born. That word of the creator is a person. That person is Messiah Yahushua. So for you to be able to accept that word, it's not just like reading a book. You need the spirit of the creator. You need the Messiah Yahushua. You need to pray. You need to be 
it's just a privilege it's not something you can earn so you just have to pray about it okay that's why ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 tells you clearly for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of yahuwah a gift is an unmerited favor it is the gift of yahuwah for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing you cannot say oh because of your good works you are part of the chosen your name is written in the book of life the ones that are blind that you know they are cursed on no it is not by your grace nobody is good the scriptures tell us clearly only the father yahuwah is good even when the messiah yahushua was on earth and he was called good master he said why do you call me good no one is good except the father elohim okay so do not grumble with one another when people refuse just pray for them because second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 tells you the reason clearly in their case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Messiah Yahushua, who is the image of Yahuwah. Okay, so you have to know that the day Yahushua Hamashiach became the son of the creator, that was the day he inherited the image of his father Yahuwah, as said in Hebrews chapter 1. So that is why he tells you clearly that in the case of young believers in their case satan the god of this world he tells you clearly that satan is the god of this world but he's now deceived you into believing that when you make a capital letter g a small letter g it makes a difference it doesn't think about it when your name is called you answer you don't bother whether it's written in small or capital letter the same with satan his name is god when he is called he answers because the only way human beings can worship and commune with the spiritual realm is through what is, is is verbally you don't communicate through writing through petitions so why do you think that the way you write the, the letter g small letter or capital letter determines you know makes a difference or determines a different person receives the worship no it doesn't because like i always give an 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 an, an analogy like um you open a business and you decide to name it british airways and the normal british airways is just written in capital letter b for british and capital letter a for the airways and then you open your own business maybe a grocery store or anything and then you make yours all in capital letters british airways and british airways sues you and then for using their name illegally and when you go to court, you tell them it makes a whole lot of difference that you are justified because when you write it in capital letter, it becomes a different name and you have the right to use it for a different business. It's wrong. You know it's illegal. Human beings are fussy with their names. Human beings do not allow somebody to impersonate their business name. When somebody makes a mistake in your own name, you correct them quickly. Even as a child, you go to school, your teacher spells your name wrong, you point it out. And when the person tells you whatever, it doesn't matter, you are offended. So why do you think that the name of the creator does not matter? Why do you think that the name of Satan, God, automatically means a different person when the, the letter is changed? Do you communicate with the spiritual realm through writing? And if, if, if at all, you know, the name God is for Satan. If you watch Michael Shabbat on YouTube, he tells you clearly with all the evidence that you need about is Satan the Lord God? If you type in that um, search on YouTube, Michael Shabbat, M-I-K-A-L-S-H-A-B-B-A-T, Michael Shabbat, is Satan the Lord God? Is Jesus the anti-Messiah? You're going to see all the evidence you need, you know, broken down for you. You know how everything was superimposed how all the changes were made that is why christianity was established through slavery through violence through bloodshed through murders people were burnt alive at the stake because opposition you know opponents were trying to speak the truth and the voices of the truth were silenced for generations and for centuries until the new generation of people were born to believe the lies that God is the creator and Jesus is the Messiah and we are the offspring of that unfortunate generation that have been brainwashed to fulfill the prophecies in Daniel 7 25 and Revelation 13 8 okay so you can see clearly that when people do not believe in the right person there is no way that they can receive forgiveness or salvation for their souls because the book of hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 tells you clearly that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins in the spiritual realm the only means the only medium of exchange is blood sacrifice that is why the, the creator you know used to allow them to use animal sacrifices if you read the book of numbers 
chapter 10, Levit Leviticus chapter 10, how they were allowed to use animal sacrifices, but these were temporary atonement for their sins. You know, um, in Numbers chapter 3, verse 10 and Numbers 18, 7, he appointed the sons of Aaron to be his priests and their duty was to offer atonement for the sins of the people. So people would bring their animals and they would lay their hands on it once in a year and they would transfer their sins, confess their sins upon the animal and symbolically the sins are transferred upon the animal and the animal is slit and slain and the blood of the animal is used as atonement for this forgiveness of their sins because only blood can wash away sins. Now you have to know that in Genesis 3, the whole humanity, mankind was cursed for generations unborn because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. You have to know what made Adam and Eve guilty is not the tree. Everything the creator created was good. In Genesis chapter 1, he said that after he created the whole world, he said that everything he created was good. What made it sinful was the fact that they took of that tree against the instruction of Yahuwah the Creator. That made it an act of disobedience and that made it a sin. And Satan knows that the consequences of sin is what? In Ezekiel chapter, in Ezekiel 18 4, it tells you that the soul that sin shall die. And that Ezekiel 18 20 tells you that nobody can pay for the sins of another person. So it was the plan of Lucifer because he knows all the commandments of the Creator. He was an archangel in heaven. His plan was that when he deceived eve into sinning adam would also be held responsible because yahuwah always you know holds the person in charge responsible for the sins of those under him that is why in exodus chapter 20 verse 4 he says when he disobeys his commandments he's going to visit the sins of the father to the generations to the third and fourth generations unborn of the father to the you know to the father's um, to, to the children's children of the you know of the father who committed the sins so that is the plan of lucifer in the garden of eden and that was why he made adam and eve to sin because so that their so, so that their soul shall die and their offspring shall be condemned for generations unborn because he knows how yahuwah the creator operates he used to be an archangel in heaven and that was exactly what he succeeded in doing okay so when eve submitted her obedience to the serpent she did not bow down and worship to him no but that act of disobedience condemned her of, of idolatry because she transferred the obedience of the creator onto satan onto the serpent and that made her guilty of sin to her generations unborn all right so <clears throat> sorry so this is so this is what you know how how sin is calculated with the most high when you sin, it goes to the third and fourth generations unborn, and the soul that sin shall die. Ezekiel 18 20 tells you that nobody can pay for the sins of another person. So Lucifer knew all this. First, the soul that sin shall die. Ezekiel 18 4. Human beings, all of them will start dying. Their generations unborn. Exodus 20 4. To the third and fourth generations, they will be condemned. And nobody can redeem another person. Nobody can pay for the sins of another. Ezekiel 18 20. And Hebrews 9.22 tells you that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Now, human beings could use animal sacrifices for a short while, but Adam was not, you know, was made without sin. So a human made without sin was required to compensate and make atonement for the sins of Adam. Because animals animals cannot make atonement for the sins of for the sin of Adam because Adam was a spotless being. That is why Messiah Yahushua had to take human flesh, had to be born, had to use himself to offer sacrifice for us to fulfill that law of sin and death. Ezekiel 18 for Hebrews 9 22. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And in the case of Adam's sin, it has to be perfect, unblemished sacrifice. It has to be a spotless lamb. And that is why the Creator had to send His Son, John 3, 16, for Yahuwah so loved the world that He sent His Son, Yahushua, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. This is the reason He had to send His Son, to fulfill the law of sin and death. Because the soul that sin shall die. We sinned. We deserve to die because of our, you know, our, our parents' sins. Nonetheless, you know, we are guilty of it, even though we were not in the Garden of Eden. But that is how Yahuwah the Creator works. The sins of the fathers have visited on the children's children to generations unborn. That is why in um, Genesis 18, he said, I have chosen Abraham to produce my people, the Yahuda Israelites, 
because he is going to pass on my laws and he will guard my commands with his children's children after him. So it is the duty of the parents. If they fail to, to comply and to fulfill that duty, the children are still liable for the sins and the, you know, the ignorance because ignorance is no excuse. Hebrews, um, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 tells you ignorance is no excuse. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Your lack of knowledge will not save you from perishing. Okay. Romans chapter 2 verse 12 also tells you when the Gentiles sin, even though they never heard about the Creator or His laws, they will be destroyed for their sins. But you who know the Creator's laws in the Torah, when you fail to obey the Torah, you will be judged by the Torah. So ignorance is no excuse. So you can see clearly when people fail to accept Messiah Yahushua, they have technically refused to accept their salvation because without the shedding of blood, Hebrews 9.22, there is no forgiveness of sins. So if you are calling upon the blood of Jesus, you cannot receive forgiveness of your sins. First, Jesus has never been born. Secondly, he has no blood. Thirdly, he's the son of Satan. Fourthly, he cannot make atonement for your sin because he is Satan himself. Just as the Messiah Yahushua is the incarnate of Yahuwah the Creator, so Jesus is the incarnate of Lucifer, Satan. Okay, so without accepting the Messiah, Yahushua, Hebrews 9.22 tells you clearly, you cannot receive forgiveness of your sins and you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven because nothing unclean can enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right, so and you cannot be saved by your free will or by your good way, um, goodwill or your good deeds. People think, oh, it doesn't matter so long as I'm a good person. How can you be a good person? How can you really be a good person if you don't know what the Creator demands of you? In your mindset, your conscience tells you it's good. Just like maybe in some country, just like my friend told me, in Ethiopia, they eat raw flesh. They eat raw animals like that. They don't cook it. For them, that is okay. All right? So, but if you, in the UK, give somebody raw meat... We, you will be arrested for health and safety reasons. So it's for you have to know the laws of the person for you to know how to be good. So you cannot say so long as you're a good person, it doesn't really matter. How do you know the expectation of the creator to justify yourself as, as a good person? Just like when King Saul spared Abimelech and the you know and his his livestock, the sheep and the goats when the creator gave an order wipe out every single living thing in that land because they were heathens Saul went and killed everybody sparing the king to use him as a slave and to torture him and all that and then spread the livestock the animals you know the goats and sheep to use them as offering unto yahuwah because you know like i said you have to bring a lamb or you go to a cow for the atonement of your sins periodically so that singular act made him to lose the favor of the creator and the creator removed his favor upon him and he was dethroned from being a king okay because the creator said obedience is better than sacrifice so you saying you don't have to obey the creator you don't have to obey the the laws and the torah you don't have to abide by the rules and the regulations so long as you have a good conscience how do you know the expectations required of you how can you know how can you make yourself righteous if you do not comply because he told us clearly nothing unclean can enter the kingdom of heaven all right and ignorance is no excuse so unbelievers clearly cannot receive salvation and the forgiveness of their sins because they do not acknowledge the name and the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach, which is the blood of the unblemished and spotless lamb of Yahuwah. And they make Jesus, the son of Satan, to be equal with the son of the creator Yahuwah, making themselves guilty of idolatry. Excuse me. So clearly you can see that, you know, this strips them of salvation because nothing unclean can enter the kingdom of Yahuwah. Only the blood of Yahushua Hamashiach can save you, not your good deeds, not your supposed so long as you're a good person, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you must accept only Yahushua Hamashiach as your savior and your Yahuwah that your soul and those of your loved ones may be saved and your name may be written on the book of life. All right, so you cannot, you know, 
access the creator through any other means except through his son Yahushua HaMashiach because he told us clearly in John 14 6 no one comes to the father except through me not just because he is the son but because he is the high priest and nobody accesses the creator except through the high priest even in John in Numbers 3 10 Numbers 18 7 he told us clearly that nobody can have access to the creator except through his priest and anybody who comes close to priesthood except by you know appointment by the creator himself will be stricken to death priesthood is only by birth so he cannot have access to the creator directly you must go through his priest isaiah 15 59 verse 2 tells you that because of your sins your creator has turned his back on you because your sins are so grave and nothing you know he cannot stand sin he cannot stand iniquity why do you think he turned his back on his son when Messiah Yahushua was on the cross and he screamed because the title of the creator is Elohim, not God, and his name is Yahuwah. Now, this, is Elohim or Eli or, or Elion? So the, the son screamed, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Now, why do you think he said that? Because he was carrying the sins of the whole world. Because he was using himself as the sacrifice for the atonement of sin. Like I said, and the duty, the, the duty of the priest is to is to perform atonement sacrifices for the sins of the peoples of of the peoples to be forgiven. Right now. People have to transfer their sins symbolically onto that animal sacrifice. In his own case, he is the animal sacrifice upon whom all the sins are transferred and he is also the high priest. So this is why when he was on the cross, he was bearing all the sins. He was the filthy animal sacrifice. He was carrying all the iniquities of the world and his father had to turn his back on him because he could not stand the iniquity. And he screamed out, Elohim, Elohim, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. Why have you forsaken me? This is the reason because his blood is the only perfect unblemished sacrifice that can be used for the atonement of your sins. No one comes to the Father except through the Son because he is the priest. He is the sacrifice. He is everything. So you cannot have any other channel. He is the gateway to heaven. Okay. So you cannot be praying through any other means. Unauthorized worship is condemnable the creator yahuwah struck down his chosen priest for unauthorized worship even for an accidental unpremeditated mistake in leviticus chapter 10 verse 9 okay <clears throat> if you read the whole leviticus 10 you're gonna see the whole story okay so this is the reason only the blood of yahushua hamashiach can save you not your good deeds he is the perfect spotless sacrifice that can make atonement to alleviates you from that curse given to Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3 because a perfect person a perfect human being had to be used to pay for their to, to had to be used as atonement for the sins of Adam who was created a perfect human all right so even though Adam didn't commit the sins he was liable because he was in charge of Eve that is why Eve got the punishment of childbearing but Adam also got the punishment meant for Eve, meant for Eve, because when Eve's descendants, Eve's children are cursed, Adam's offspring are also cursed technically. So not only did Adam get the punishment that he would till the ground, he would labor, he would be the provider, but also his children through Eve would also be, you know, be separated from the creator due to their sins. That is why so many thousands of years were waiting for the Messiah to be born. Isaiah, Isaiah 53, you will hear how Isaiah was lamenting. They were praying for the Messiah, Yahushua, to be born. Because when everybody died, they had no access to the, um, to the Creator. They had no access to heaven. They were all stuck in their graves. That is why in Matthew um, 27 verse 52, as soon as Messiah, Yahushua, Hamashiach died, it says that the graves of the long dead saints were opened and they arose from their graves and they were seen walking in the cities. All right, so we can see clearly that this is this is the, the the modus operandi in the spiritual realm. Only the blood of the spotless lamb can wash away sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Hebrews nine twenty two. Animal sacrifices have been abolished, so you have only one option: Yahushua Hamashiach. You cannot merge him with Jesus Christ. You cannot superimpose anybody over him because John five twenty two. He tells you clearly that the Father has given 
all authority to the son. The father has given all judgment to the son because the father loves the son and has entrusted everything unto the son. <clears throat> okay. He tells you in John 5, 22, the father does not judge anybody, but has given all judgment to the son. So if you are rejecting the person who is going to judge you, you are doing damage to your soul. It's better you were never born. So John chapter 10, verses 26 to 30 tells you, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, this is Messiah Yahushua telling the people, just as I'm telling, you know, everybody today, the reason people are not able to believe, Messiah Yahushua has already told us why. You do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I say to you. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That is why even when all these prophecies being fulfilled, Revelation 13, 8, all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. When the sheep of, Yah of Yahushua hear the word of Yahuwah, they follow because the word of Yahuwah is Yahushua Hamashiach. That is why he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them everlasting life and they shall by no means ever perish and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. By no means is great. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. So Satan can do whatever he wants to do, but he cannot take away the chosen ones from the creator's hands. Only you have the decision, the free will to change your destiny. Satan has no authority over your soul. That is why Satan can only deceive. A deceiver is like a scammer, it's like a 419, it's like a fraudster. If you give them the chance, they deceive you. If you do not give them an, a listening ear, any attention, they don't stand a chance. That is, is that, that that is the way it is with Satan. That is why in John 8 44, he told them that Satan is the father of all lies. He has no authority over you. Nobody can take you from the Father's hands except you choose to leave, except you choose to give your worship and devotion to Satan. Because all those who come to Yahushua are those who would have been taught by Yahuwah the Father. John 6, 43, 45. No one is able to come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Okay, and also John chapter 10, he confirms that again. You do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I say to you. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give them everlasting life, and they shall by no means ever perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me, the same father who has taught them. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. Alright. That is why it's all in fulfillment of the prophecies. That Satan has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. That they may not see the glory of the Messiah Yahushua. Who is the image of Yahuwah. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. It tells us how the end times will be. That people are going to be Jesus defensive. People are going to be religious people are going to have a form of holiness but they will reject the power that makes them holy so it's going to be all sheer hypocrisy that is why when most people are very aggressive they call you names they use abusive words i ask them if jesus was actually the son of the creator <clears throat> do you really care to obey his commandments if jesus was not was not the son of satan do you really obey his commandments? Do you bear good fruits? Because, you know, the Messiah Yahushua told us, you cannot bear fruits, you cannot bear good fruits, except you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. You cannot bear good fruits. The reason people are bearing bad fruits, the reason people are hypocritical, is because they are abiding in the, in the you know, in the wrong tree. And that tree is Lucifer. They are abiding in lucifer because the messiah yahushua said abide in me and bear good fruit but if you are abiding in jesus you are abiding in the son of satan if you are abiding in god you are abiding in satan so you cannot bear good fruits that is why there is sheer hypocrisy you see even the supposed clergy because they are not priests of the most high they are priests of satan you see the pope all the blasphemies and everything he says boldly on the internet and his followers his, his his fellow clergy, his bishops, his cardinals, they are all in support of him. 
because they are abiding in the wrong tree. They cannot bear good fruit. You go on YouTube, you're going to see stories about um, the convents that was ripped by priests, how the, the nuns and the priests, they do terrible things, not because they intend to. I'm very sure that when they were children, intending to grow up and become priests, none of them intended to be evil, to bear such evil fruits, but it's all because they are biting in the wrong tree. No matter how hard they try, they cannot help it. Why? Because the more they eat of the body and blood of Jesus, the more they eat of the body and blood of Satan. So they just bear fruits worthy of Satan. John 15 verses 4 to 6 tells you, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, Yahushua is the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Without my Messiah Yahushua, you can do nothing. So no matter how hard you try, even like fast from morning till night, even like walk on you know on your on your knees on gravel or whatever it is, don't drink water, fast. You cannot bear good fruit. Your instincts will always be evil. You will always have satanic inclinations to betray, to be treacherous, to be evil, to be ungrateful, to steal, to cheat, to fornicate, to do evil because you are biding in the wrong tree. For without me, you can do nothing. You cannot, you will do nothing. You can do nothing because you are incapable of, no matter how hard you try. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. That is John 15 verses 4 to 6. Okay, so it tells you clearly how the end times will be. How people will be struggling and, you know, fruitlessly, tirelessly, and they cannot bear good fruits. Why? Because they are abiding in the wrong branches. Now, Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 6 tells you, But know this, that in the last days hard times shall come. These are fulfillments of the prophecies is happening today. For men shall be lovers of self. Lovers of silver, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, thankless, wrongdoers, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, fierce, haters of good, haters of good. But they will all be hypocritical. They will all be religious. They will all be Jesus defensive. They will all be God defensive. But they will be haters of good. Betrayers, they'll be betrayers, reckless, puffed up, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of Elohim, the creator. People reject Yahuwah. For my name's sake, he will be hated. So they will claim to be all religious, but they will be haters of good. They'll be lovers of pleasure, but they will be haters of Yahuwah. They will not be lovers of Yahuwah, the creator. Having a form of reverence, having a form of holiness, but denying the power that makes them holy. That power that makes them holy is Yahushua and is, is Yahuwah the Creator, but they will reject Yahuwah the Creator. They will reject Yahushua Hamashiach. They will not have the spirit of Yahuwah because they will have sheer hypocrisy. They will have a form of holiness, but they will reject the power that makes them holy. That is why the whole world is so religious. Every religion worships God because God is Satan. Every religion worships Satan in fulfillment of Revelation 13.8. And it's all sheer hypocrisy. There is no true love in people's hearts. No matter how hard they try, they cannot be, 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 be right. That is why there is high, high rise in divorce, high rate of crimes, high increase of everything evil. Families betraying each other, lovers of pleasure, lovers of money, lovers of evil, but haters of Yahuwah, haters of good. Okay? Matthew 24 verses 10 to 13 tells you, And then many shall stumble, and they shall deliver up one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise up and lead many astray. And because of the increase in lawlessness, the love of many shall become cold. But he who shall have endured to the end shall be saved. 
So this is all in fulfillment of the prophecy. This is all what has been foretold in advance that these things will happen because people are going to be abiding in the wrong tree. People are going to be abiding in Satan. So they will bear fruits of Satan. A good tree can never produce a bad fruit and a bad tree can never produce a good fruit. So if Jesus is the, is the vine that you are abiding in, it can never produce good fruit. There will never be the love of Yahuwah in your heart. There will never be the goodness of Yahuwah in your heart. There will never be the holiness of Yahuwah in your heart. It is going to be all sheer hypocrisy. Two phase because you, no matter how hard you try, you can only bear bad fruit. Because just like your mango tree, every stem of that mango tree can only produce mango. So you cannot be in the tree of of jesus and expect to bear the fruits of yahushua because they are different persons one is the son of the creator and the other is the son of satan and that is jesus okay now matthew 7 13 to 14 tells you the narrow and the wide gates enter through the narrow gates for wide is the gates and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it many will go through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few people find it only a few people find it the chosen ones as stated in revelations 13 8 okay this is why also daniel prophesied about it the blinded eyes and the chosen ones daniel chapter 12 verse 4 but you daniel hide the words and seal the book until the time of the end Many shall diligently search and knowledge shall increase. He says many. He does not say all. Many shall diligently search and knowledge shall increase. This is what is happening in the end times. To fulfill Acts 2, 17. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So this is all what is it, the, the the Bible is the, the sorry the scriptures are all in synchronization with 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 each other. The Bible is the word of God. God is Satan. The Bible is the book of Satan. You have to use the original scriptures. Read the scriptures. Do not read the Bible. Read the scriptures. ISR version. ISR stands for Institute of Scriptural Research. So use that. You're going to get your original word of Yahuwah because it's going to remove all the all the fallacies where it should be assembly they put church church is a hidden temple for satanic worship that is why the churches are the houses of god because they are the houses of satan to fulfill the end times prophecies where they should put torah they put laws romans chapter 2 verse 12 making me believe that you have to disregard the torah you must obey every command in the torah except the laws on animal sacrifice and murder because those have been abolished to separate the sheep from the goats in the last days that revelations 13 tells you that satan will be will instruct his people to make war with the saints of yahuwah and to overcome them so an eye for an eye law mosaic law has been abolished but besides that you must obey every law in the torah observe every feast of yahuwah the creator because none of that has been abolished these were all removed to make you guilty of of negligence of ignorance but ignorance is no excuse it doesn't mean you have to practice judaism because judaism as a religion you know rejects the holy trinity and rejects messiah yahushua and he tells you clearly in matthew 28 18 to 20 if you reject the holy trinity the same reason lucifer was thrust out of hell for rebelling against the holy trinity that is how you will be rejected if you reject the messiah yahushua just as judaism does John 3, 18 tells you, whoever does not believe is condemned already, but who, who believes is saved because they have believed in the name of the only son of Yahuwah, the creator. Okay. John chapter 17, verse 9, the Messiah Yahushua was telling you clearly about the chosen ones and the ones that are blinded. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Excuse me. Revelation 13, 8 tells you, And all those dwelling on the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the slain lamb from the foundation of the world shall worship Satan. This has so many points to note. I'm going to break it down. All those dwelling on the earth, all inhabitants of the earth will worship Satan. Okay, except those whose names are written in the book of life. Now it tells you all those dwelling on the earth, 
or inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life the blind ones you know those who are not chosen of the slain lamb telling there's gonna be a true lamb and a fake lamb just like um revelation 13 11 tells you of the fake lamb with two horns posing as a lamb but in truth it is the dragon now revelation 13 8 tells you also whose names have not been written in the book of life of the slain lamb okay specifically telling you there's gonna be more than one lamb who of the slain lamb from the foundation of the world telling you that he was slain from the foundation of the world that he was slain even before he was born telling you that everything that you know is happening has already happened in a different dimension okay you have already lived and you are living a second life opportunity to prove yourself worthy of the kingdom of yahuwah so all those whose names are not written in the book of life of the true lamb yahushua will worship satan but the ones whose names are there will not worship satan <coughs> sorry john chapter 12 verses 38 to 40 tells you so that the word spoken by the prophet isaiah might be fulfilled almighty who has who has believed what he heard from us and to whom has the arm of the almighty been revealed therefore they could not believe for again isaiah said he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. <clears throat> so it tells you clearly that the eyes of some people would be blinded. All right, so I'm going to be wrapping it up here. So brethren, this is the reason some people's eyes are blinded so because they are not part of the chosen, but they still have a chance by the name of Yahushua HaMashiach to save their souls because the creator respects the free will of human beings. He has given us that option amongst all his creatures to make our decisions, the free will to choose who we will serve. Joshua twenty two fifteen, choose you this day whom you will serve. It tells you in Matthew 24 when you read it, that when you put your hand to the plow, do not look back. Do not say, oh, my mother does not agree with me. My father does not believe in Yahushua. My sister does not. My brother does not. Don't look back. Your heavenly race is just for you. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yahushua's guidance. Please share the video and all the best. Until next time.